Hi folks, um, today we are going to be talking about MongoDB and Rockset and how Rockset can be used to scale real-time analytics for data you have in MongoDB. So my name is Dhruba Barthakur. I'm the CTO and co-founder at, at Rockset. Um, a short introduction to, about myself. Um, prior to Rockset, I was a founding engineer of RocksDB database when I was an engineer at Facebook. I built a lot of Facebook backend analytics applications or infrastructure for analytics applications. Prior to that, I was a founding engineer of the Hadoop file system when I was an engineer at Yahoo. And I also built a lot of uh, backend internal HBase, uh, parts of the HBase distributed database. So when I talk about real-time analytics in the cloud, what are the use cases that come to mind? So I'm going to give you one or two examples just to kind of uh, do a level set on what these real-time analytics use cases are. Take for example, one of our customers, uh, they're tracking millions of tickets per day on ordering and delivering concrete across the United States. So a lot of their um, trucks that are moving, uh, they record their system of, they record their current um, positions and things like catalogs and what they're delivering from where, where's the pickup date, where they're getting delivered to, they all get recorded in a transaction database but they also need a lot of real-time search and analytics on the job tickets that are critical to their business. Some of these are decision-making processes that need to quickly react on the changes that are happening to, to these tickets. So they use Rockset for this. Um, it allows them, a you know, Rockset is serverless, which is one reason why they prefer Rockset. And they feel like, uh, and a feel that's so easy to use that you can cut down their development times by, many X, uh, things that used to take many weeks or months now takes days or hours if when they're using Rockset. Another example is a real-time leaderboard for health and fitness. Um, let's say you have a mobile app and you are tracking people or people are using it to run or to, um, to jog or to bike. And uh, the application also wants to show real-time leaderboards for each, of their, for each of their users. Again, it's an analytical application and Rockset allows them to scale very quickly to lots of queries and to large data sizes without having any operational overhead. So for most of these, these are just two examples. There are many examples like these in different verticals, but, the, but there are a common set of challenges that, that most of these applications um, or real-time analytics faces when they, when they try to use um, data. So one of them is that these, these systems, the, the backend system they need it has to have speed, which means that they can give query latencies very fast. Take for example, if you have live dashboard, you cannot wait for many seconds for a dashboard to refresh. Similarly, you need scale, which means that you need a very high write rate and you need hundreds of terabytes of data. And then you need a serverless and zero administration so that you are not blocked on um, trying to um, like massage data from one format to another. Everything should happen automatically for you so that you don't spend a lot of time trying to do data, uh, data management. You want to build your application or your analytics systems quickly. So, so speed, scale, and simplicity are what most of these applications demand and Rockset performs well on each of these three dimensions. So what is Rockset? So Rockset is a real-time indexing database for real-time analytics at cloud scale. So it's a database, but it's a real-time database, which means that as soon as you write data to it, it's visible in queries with a very short duration within a second or two, and you can write at a very high write rate. Uh, and you can also do analytics on the other side uh, at large scale of queries and large data sizes. So what's the secret of how Rockset gives you speed? So speed, Rockset builds inverted indexes on all the fields of your data. So it actually builds uh, a, something, we call it converse index, it builds an inverted index, it builds a columnar index and it builds a row index. So all these indexes are built automatically. So Rockset gets its speed because it builds indices on all your data. A very concrete example here, the two documents that are, that are JSON documents coming into the system Rockset shreds these two these documents into individual key values and stores it in a in a in a key value store called RocksDB. Uh, but the interesting thing is that it, for every document, it 
takes every field and indexes it at least in three different ways. One is just like a row store like Postgres as if you are storing it in Postgres, which these are the keys that start with the R. Then there is a set of keys called the column store where the keys start with C. And this is very similar to how a warehouse or a columnar database might store data. And then the, all the keys that start with S in this picture, they're the inverted index, just like how Lucene or Elasticsearch stores your data. So these indexes are built automatically. So now when a query comes in, the, the system automatically figures out which index to use to give you the lowest latency for your queries. Now just imagine, uh, instead of you copying data to Elasticsearch or copying data to a warehouse or copying data to Postgres to run different workloads, you can run this different, all these workloads on Rockset and you the system automatically performs, gives you the best performance on your data. So this is one reason why developers love our system because they don't have to do data engineering or they don't have to do a lot of data copying or massaging before they can run queries on it. This, this is automatically built for them and you can directly run queries as soon as the data is ready. So essentially it lets you run queries on raw data, raw JSON data. So that's for, as far as the speed is concerned. Now, if you look at the scale, the scale is provided by something called the aggregator leaf data architecture. So Rockset scale, uh, be, because of the ALT architecture, and this is an architecture that we used to power a lot of systems that we built earlier at Facebook. For example, the Facebook news feed or the Facebook spam detection system, they all use the aggregator leaf tailor architecture. Uh, there are three layers to this architecture. This is the tailor, which takes in data from, let's say, a MongoDB database, or it takes data from a data stream or, or like data lake like S3, and it converts those XML, JSON, or any other raw formats into an internal protobuf format that's indexable. The leaf nodes are the ones that store the data. That's called, that's, the, that's kind of the storage nodes. And then the aggregators, uh, the blue ones that you see on your, on your screen, those are the ones that are used for query. They're like multi-level aggregators where you can do large scale aggregation, joins, group buys, order buys, sorting uh, as part of your query requests. So the tailors are separated from the leaf nodes and are separated from the aggregators. So the leaf nodes are in an indexing system. It's very much like a distributed search engine, which is optimized for low latency queries like say Google search or any other search. On the other hand, the aggregators is like a distributed uh, query engine uh, where you can run complex SQL analytics on large data sets just because the aggregators can scale up and down based on your query demand. And the tailors are separate again because it can support bursty write rates and you can, um, you, you, can, you can stream in a lot of data in megabytes or tens and hundreds of megabytes per second into the database. Um, the, the, the critical part is that the data, this architecture has a CQRS pattern where, which means that the writes are separated from the reads. The writes are the tailors and the reads are the aggregators. So it separates the ingest compute and the query compute. This is one reason why it's called a real time database because the CPU needed to write is separated out from the CPU needed to query. And so if you, even if you have a high write rate, it doesn't impact query latencies and consistencies of your queries. Now how it works, um, a step below for, let's talk about how it works with MongoDB database, for example. Let's say you have an operational application, you are, you are a logistics or your fleet management company, you are recording all your fleet's movements or changes to your fleet in your MongoDB database, which is a great database to, as a system of record. But now you also want to do some analytics on those. So what you do is that you connect Rockset to MongoDB. I actually have a demo at the end and I can show you how this actually works. So you connect Rockset to MongoDB using some points and clicks and Rockset does a bulk upload of MongoDB first, and then it continuously does a MongoDB chain stream updates. So that any time the MongoDB database changes, those changes are reflected in the index in Rockset. And now your data-driven analytics applications or real-time analytics use cases can hit Rockset directly without impacting your MongoDB database. Um, this, this, this setup is actually very simple. Uh, you don't have to manage any ETLs. You don't have to create an ETL to do MongoDB chain stream. It automatically happens for you. 
And this is the reason why developers like us is because they don't, they're not a deep, they don't have to be play the role of a DBA or a data administrator or an ETL pipeline manager to while using Rockset. It's point and click and it works seamlessly with Mongo. <clears throat> the reasons, a uh, couple of reasons why, why a couple of reasons why the analytics applications love Rockset is because Rockset gives not only uh, aggregations, but it also gives you fast, fast search. For example, things that uh, for queries that have very high selectivity, those run very fast on Rockset. Queries that have aggregations also run fast because you have a columnar aggregation or columnar indexing. And the, you can also join across two different data sets. So this is something I'm going to show in the demo later uh, at the end of this talk. And uh, your, your data, and so because Rockset indexes all your data, uh, that's why these these type all these types of queries are fast. But that's not the entire story. The story is also that many times you have a lot of data, not just in Mongo, but maybe in Kafka or maybe in S3, and you want to connect all of them into Rockset. So Rockset understands JSON by default. It's kind of natively built into Rockset. And you, just by pointing and clicking and connecting these sources, you can actually start making SQL queries on Rockset immediately. Also Rockset, you don't have to create a schema, uh, unlike traditional SQL systems, you can directly operate on JSON. Um, and you don't have to do any additional data modeling at all. If you have, if new fields appear in your source MongoDB database, if that those fields are automatically indexed in Rockset without having to do any operational or uh, configuration for you, for you. It's designed for developers. Um, I mean, Rock, uh, JSON is native to Rockset, but over and above that, we have a feature called Query Lambdas. So Query Lambdas allow developers to turn this SQL into reliable data APIs. So Rockset supports SQL. Uh, the reason again we support SQL is that because it's very, it, 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 it can support very complex queries, including sorts, joints, and aggregations. But on the other hand, using SQL on your application sometimes is complicated or um, is kind of a impedance mis mismatch because you don't want to embed these huge humongous SQL queries inside your application code. So what you do is that you create a query lambda and you put in your SQL code there and then the query lambda gives you a rest endpoint. Now, if you have an application, let's say you write an application PHP or Ruby on Rails or JSON, you know, those can just use a simple HTTP or a REST client and hit these REST um, query lambdas and get SQL executed automatically for them and get queried results. So these query lambdas can be versioned, uh, which lets you manage them as code. Uh, and then you can also kind of join them with or like use them with your CI CD pipelines, your dev and test uh, production systems. You can also, and again, you can also do things like um, for these query lambdas, there's automatically integrated VS code plugins. You can actually see them um, as um, you can see them in your, in your developer workflows. And if you are interested in trying this out, you can also use our Node or Java, Go or Python SDK libraries that are on our website. <clears throat> uh, developers, uh, most developers prefer Rockset for building analytics applications because um, there is performance isolation between MongoDB and Rockset index. So even if uh, your analytics, so your analytics queries can never impact uh, the production database at all because they're two, two tightly, there are two separate systems, but they're tightly coupled with one another. So this is a great advantage because now you can build and ship multiple analytical applications on Rockset without impacting the performance, uh, without having any performance degradation on your uh, system of record that's your MongoDB database. Rockset is also fully managed and it's cloud native. You don't have to manage servers. You don't have to manage indexes. You don't have to manage um, any other like machines or networks. Uh, you don't have to manage any shards. Uh, you can also deploy Rockset in your VPC, uh, which means that if you need more security and you cannot let any of your data um, be hosted by the Rockset uh, in the Rockset cloud service, you can actually take Rockset and deploy it inside your VPC for enterprise grade security. <clears throat> you still get the benefits of serverless and uh, zero operational overhead, but now you can run it inside your own cloud account. 
So that is in short, a little uh, uh, short overview of Rockset. I'm going to give you a demo of, of, of Rockset and I'm going to show you how um, you can join and make or do analytics on, on, a, on, a, on a database which has multiple tables. So, okay, so this is a MongoDB database. And now all of you, it's through MongoDB Atlas and most of you might be familiar already with it. I have a database called weather pollution data and it has two tables, air pollution data and weather data. So these are again, uh, sample JSON documents you can see here. Uh, the, the, the reason I picked two tables is because I'm going to show you how we can join data between these two uh, collections and then build an analytic systems on it or an analytic system on it. So it's very easy to connect Rockset with, with MongoDB. Uh, the first thing is, the, is that you can go to, you first have to create a Rockset user so that we can access the MongoDB Atlas cluster. You can, in this example, I create a Rockset role. It needs only three roles, the chain stream role, which is basically a read-only role, call stats and find. The reason again, because Rockset looks at, first does an initial dump and then uses a chain stream to keep the index updated. Uh, so I'm going to create, uh, after that, I create a Rockset database user called Rockset-user. And then this is the Rockset user that I'm going to configure in the Rockset console. And then in the network access, I have to go give uh, IP whitelisting for these three IP addresses. These are IP addresses for uh, Rockset. So when the Mongo Atlas uh, finds requests coming from an external source, they can verify that these are the verified addresses for Rockset uh, to access this data. So those are the three things that you need to do for the Mongo Atlas um, UI. Uh, and now you go to Rockset console. This is the Rockset console. You can go to console.rockset.com and then you can sign up for, a, for an account there. And it's very easy to connect that, uh, that those two databases that I created using the Rockset console. The first thing is that you have to create an integration. So the integration are things which lets you configure the permissions that you want Rockset to access your MongoDB cluster. So you can yeah, create an integration. We support these different types of sources. For this example, we are going to use MongoDB. You can see that we also support DynamoDB, Kafka, Kinesis, Redshift, and S3. So let's say I create, create a MongoDB integration. I say start. Now, <clears throat> I will obviously give a name for this uh, integration. Let's say it's a MongoDB integration description, something here. And now this is the Rockset user that I created. I'll give you the, I'll type in the password here. And then the default database, again, the one that we showed it in the Atlas cluster. <clears throat> so weather pollution DB and then the connection string that I got from the Atlas UI and I say save integration. So as soon as I save integration, this integration will show up here. This is the integration that we just created, um, Rockset Mongo integration. So now I'm going to create collections from this, uh, from this integration. So I'll say create a collection. So there'll be a Rockset, one separate Rockset collection for each of the tables that I have in MongoDB. Let's say I call this the weather data collection. And what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to say uh, database name, so weather, Pollution DB, and then I'm going to type in the name of the name of the MongoDB collection. As soon as I type in the name of the MongoDB collection, there is a preview here which shows up and gives you a sample of all the data that's in the MongoDB collection. See, now Rockset has already started to suck in a few sample documents to show as a preview. This is just to make sure that you are looking at the right set of data. <clears throat> and then uh, you can sell some field mapping so you can ignore it for now. You can also have retention saying that keep these documents for a few days or weeks or months. And then you can say, create this, create this collection. So now again, we are creating one collection. This is the pollution, this is the weather data collection and we're calling it weather data collection. As soon as we press this, create button, create system here. So we go to collection and we see that this uh, collection is created now. <clears throat> Where our data collection is created. 
It has some documents, it's last updated a few minutes ago. I already created it a few minutes before this uh, demo. And you can see that all these documents start showing up in this collection. You can also see that all the fields that are in every JSON document shows up here. Now, the interesting thing is that we never actually created a, a, a table with a schema or anything. We just pointed it to the MongoDB you know, collection that, that you had created in MongoDB. It right shows up here. We do the same thing for the other collection as well, the weather pollution data. So if I go back to, uh, go back to the MongoDB database and I look at all the collections that I have there, I, I showed you that we have two collections out there. Uh, let me go back and show you the two collections again in the MongoDB Atlas cluster. This is again the MongoDB Atlas UI. Uh, and it's going to show you the two collections that I created and for each of those collections, I am in the process of creating a collection of rock set. So those are the two Atlas collections, area pollution data and weather data. So I created one for weather data. I'm going to, do, I can do the same thing for the other collection as well. So I'm assuming that I created two collections in rock set now. Now let's go to the query editor and see how I can make some queries on this data. So Rockset supports SQL, which means that you can do complex aggregation joins and sorts and everything. So let's do select star and run from this. One of these collections, I'm going to do uh, find one record. I can see this record here. I did a limit one, which is why only one record is showing up. I can see it as a JSON. It will tell you database. It will tell you that the units, the clouds, uh, all the fields that are in the MongoDB document, they are here too, and they're actually indexed for you. So this is the beauty of the thing is that uh, you can now make a SQL query. Let's say I want to find the current weather. So I'm going to do, um, I need to do order by because I'm looking at descending and I want to see the most current weather or the most latest value of the weather. So I'm going to run this and I'm going to run this on this data set and you see it takes 57 milliseconds. Again, the reason these queries are fast is because it leverages the columnar index and the inverted index to give you query results. Now this is a more complicated SQL, uh, it's an analytical type of SQL query. Here I'm trying to find the average PM data and average weather data for the day. This needs to join because now I need to take the weather table and the pollution table and join them. So this is join here. So you can actually, Rockset supports full-fledged joins. Um, and then also for timestamps, you can actually use all the types of SQL timestamps or date time some values that that, that is supported in SQL. And all the MongoDB uh, timestamps can be converted into a SQL equivalent and be my part of your query. And if I run them, uh, I can see them again as a table. You can see that this query finished again in 51 milliseconds. And then this is the size of your table that you have. This is this, These are the query results. It says average PM is 10, average weather and date time. Again, this is a very analytics type of query. And um, you can show them as part of your real-time analytics, live dashboards or anything else that you might have. I'm also going to show you how we can set up a query Lambda. So the same query, I take it here and then I can say create a query Lambda. So the moment I create a query Lambda, I can give some name for this average PM 10 and it will basically create the same query Lambda. The same query SQL is now part of the query Lambda. So if I go to the query lambdas and I look at the one that I just created, average 10 data. Now, if I look at the SQL, see, this is the same query that I have created. The interesting part is that query lambda has, um, a, a, you, can, you can hit this query lambda from a REST API and I have a curl API here. So if you take this, if you take this uh, copy, if you copy this curl into your window, into a terminal window and run it, you will actually execute the SQL and the results will come back to you in real time. So this is a great way to run SQL queries from an application without having to embed your SQL into your application itself. So that's a short demo. We are going to show a lot of demo in our booth again. Uh, so if you happen to visit our booth, you will see our demo. And also today, later today at four o'clock, um, I'm going to be talking to with Dai Shi. Uh, he is a former DevOps at Foursquare and Foursquare used to run a very large MongoDB cluster. So he, he will help answer some of our questions related to scaling MongoDB for real-time analytics. It'll be a lively discussion. So please feel free to swing by our booth at four o'clock today. If you want to start using Rockset, go to console.rockset.com and create a free account. 
and try it for free. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your time. Bye.